Hello, my name is Julian Collins. I'm one of the hosts of the Singularity Net Community Podcast. I'm doing a series of interviews with winners from the deep funding proposal round one from Singularity Net's deep funding. Uh, basically, to give you a quick summary of what that actually was and is, uh, AI developers had an opportunity to have their AI service published on Singularity Net's decentralized AI platform and get funded for that. They were allowed to submit proposals for those things. Also, if there were a developer who wanted to utilize the service already on the platform and get funded for that, they were also encouraged to submit a proposal for that as well. Then they were ultimately voted on by the community. Um, there was about a dozen projects that ended up winning funding at the end of the day for round one. There'll be another round coming up in a few months from now. Um, but this was the first ever deep funding proposal that Singularity Net has ever done before. And it was a very interesting time. Um, there are some very exciting projects that have come out of that uh, that I particularly am excited about. So I decided as a member of the podcast, I thought I would reach out to some of these individuals, some of the leaders and people that are taking care of these projects and shepherding these projects and see if I could wrangle them for a little bit of time, ask them uh, questions about you know what their projects are and help highlight them to the community. I know everyone's very busy with their own lives and we're trying to make it easier and more available to people to learn about everything that's going on in the community. So without further ado, the following interview is one I did with Patrick Gudiv of Museverse. Museverse just won the Singularity Net's deep funding round one, and they will be getting funding for a project that is bringing musicians into the metaverse. They are using a metaverse called Somnium Space, and they have a couple of plots of land there and they're going to be basically bringing musicians in. They're creating avatars for the instruments that the musicians play. And musicians will be able to go in there, teach lessons. You'll be able to get lessons in there. Eventually, you'll be able to collaborate as a musician with other musicians in VR. And also, you'll be able to have concerts as a musician in the Somnium Space arena there. There's a couple of different venues that they have. And you'll be able to do a concert and basically they're going to be using Singularity Net's AI segmentation tool, which will actually allow them to see which people come into the space. They'll be able to actually read the amount of bodies. And then based on those, those amount of bodies, they'll actually be able to see how many are there and then pay you accordingly based off the audience that you had for your concerts in uh, a tokenomic form through the Cardano blockchain. So it's a combination collaboration between the two projects yet again. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, like three weeks ago, I was in New York. That was mm -hmm. kind of like uh, what I explored from uh, USA. But um, yeah. oh, yeah, that's a good place to start. You were in the yeah, city was... there or? Yeah, yeah, I was in the city. It was a uh, NFT NIC. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it was actually Ben, ben Gertz. I had a concert with Jim Galaxy there, and uh, so yeah, uh, it was it was That's pretty incredible. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. I was watching. They did a an ecosystem. They've been doing like this ecosystem leader update uh, with all the different spinoff projects where they have the heads um, on a call, and um, they were talking about going to that, and it sounded sounded fun. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was amazing. It was uh, really incredible. Um, I was happy to meet uh, the team of uh, Singularity Net, and um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good experience. That's great, great, great. No, I mean, uh, I I hope to one day go to some of these events. I know in Miami they have the uh, the Bitcoin conference, and I'd like to one day go to some of these uh, crypto uh, conferences and stuff. And so I'm sure there'll be more and more uh, <laughs> often leasing. So it'll be yeah, good to yeah. It's it's already happening like uh, relatively a lot of these conferences. I think the Miami one is uh, kind of uh, kind of wild because it's like a lot of uh, Bitcoin maximalists. And mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. I'm not a fan of that <laughs> when it comes to any of the coins. To be honest, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't mind it if that's what you really like, but I do not like the kind of toxicness that comes with some of it, exactly. where they kind of degrading, trying to degrade the other ones. I don't. 
I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of how people are sometimes, but it's a shame. I don't know. Yeah. I think the NFT and IC was uh, actually really interesting as uh, it's more about the side effect, side events. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. you have, uh, you know, you can always choose where to go. And uh, like, you know, if you like some certain projects, like you can, you can go to the side events and uh, it was, th th this was working pretty well. That it was not like, you know, giant conference, even though it was like, it was like 15,000 people. But uh, it was uh, more spread it over the city. And uh, so you could really find some interesting uh, side events and uh, meet some uh, good people there. Mm -hmm. So um, it, was, it was pretty amazing. That's awesome. Did you get a chance to actually meet with Ben at all uh, while you were there? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. We had, we had like 20 minutes uh, conversation. And okay. uh, so we discussed quite some, quite some topics. Nice. So uh, I hope we will follow on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was first time... Actually, second time, even though like first time I was uh, didn't have that much time to to interact with him. Like it was, I don't know, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Like it was very much in the beginning of Singularity Internet. So he mm -hmm. was actually in Prague here, and like so over here it was more. Um, we had some some time to to talk, and uh, so it was very nice, and uh, I was very happy. He was familiar with uh, what we what we are building, so uh, yeah, was, uh, quite helping. So, you know, he. Uh, yeah. I don't know. If did you know that he's really into um, piano himself? He's a, of he's course, a, of course, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's cool. I love, I, I play piano too. Piano is like my favorite. I mean, yeah, I just love I mean, piano. I know I saw those behind you. That's great. <laughs> so you've yeah. been playing, studying piano for, since you were a kid basically, or? Uh, actually not. Uh, okay. I mean, I was like, I mean, I'm from a musical family and mm -hmm. uh, so I've, you know, making music since I was six, six years, but like, I've never studied music actually. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I yeah, had a couple like of me. teachers, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I just like learn everything by myself and mm -hmm. I don't even know like much notes. I mean, it's more about like, I just like, you just use your out. ear basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And mm -hmm. so um, I play piano, guitar, drums, bass guitar, and like composing like orchestra mm -hmm. stuff also and so on. When you're composing, what kind of stuff have you been like doing lately? Um, do you have a style or is it just totally unique to yourself or how would you describe it? Uh, actually, I, I have been like lately, it's more like electronic music, mm -hmm. even though uh, I started listening back a little bit of a classical music. So uh, yeah. I also compose a little bit of like some kind of, I would call like classical pieces, even though it's more like, I don't know, piano, like solo, solo mm -hmm. tracks. Yeah, and uh, it's it's really wide. I also have a like you know live techno project that is like melodic techno with uh, you know analog synthesizers and uh, singing and guitar. So it's a little bit more um, how to say it's it's not just like a synthetic uh, beat uh, for clubs. It's more mm -hmm. like uh, melodic. Okay, and uh, and I compose also music for televisions. So wow. um, so it's like I have a lot of music in televisions. Yeah. Do you um and, uh, I I heard you talking about the classical. Do you have like a specific favorite or uh, of all the old the old classical <laughs> um, composers? Yeah. I think like Chopin is definitely something someone who I really like because uh, his music is very emotional and uh, I really like how how uh, it evolves and uh, mm -hmm. it, it's no, quite I love him. Yeah, yeah, he's so, uh, he's one of my all time favorites. He's so great. So yeah, amazing to think about them where, you know, him and Mozart, um, you know, they, they were like barely 30 years old, you know, but when they did everything, I mean, I think Chopin mm -hmm. died at like 30, which is just like insane to think about him writing this stuff. Yeah. And wow. True. true. Yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of inspiration from classical stuff and I kind of infuse it, um, with a bunch of different things, but I feel like I have a, a classical, um, leniency of sort of like ideas like you i'll kind of you know you'll play something like that's kind of a bach thing or you know you, you just kind of certain rhythms you kind of can chase it back you know so it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah yeah i agree and mm -hmm. uh, definitely the for me it's really important to have some strong emotion and the in the like you know playing the piano mm -hmm. because like Sometimes like when I'm listening to classical music, it's sometimes a little bit too kind of abstract and a little bit sometimes uh, going a little bit weirdly with the emotion. So like not, not every classical music is like uh, something I, I'm particularly enjoying, but like uh, Chopin yeah. and is definitely like, uh, like one of my favorites. 
For sure. Yeah. I don't know why it is with me too, but there's like maybe a handful and it's kind of um, a little bit cliche, but you know, Bach, Beethoven, uh, mm. Chopin. Um, it's, it's weird. Like that. I really, uh, they're, I listen to them and you know, hear other stuff, but to me, there is like a few that just stand high, high above where it's like, this is just a totally different level of, uh, <laughs> you know, understanding. It seems like where they're just going on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So, I mean, based off of the fact that you're doing this VR project, I mean, VR obviously is something that you're passionate about too. Like, what was that like? How did what is how did you get into the space, and um, how did that transform into you know having that idea or melding the two things together, which makes perfect sense. But what yeah, was... actually, the journey was uh, that I I had like. Three years ago, I had some pretty strong kind of vision or like how to say, like, I mean, like I, I kind of like was thinking a lot about uh, what is going to be probably the future of, of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got some point that I got this kind of vision that uh, it's going to be the virtual reality environment where people like, you know, as we are on the call, like we could, uh, you know, take this uh, VR headsets and that we could, uh, you know, appear in one room and like we could start making music together. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. just the, this vision of like that, you know, this is probably going to be possible, mm -hmm. like really inspired me that uh, that there is going to be the whole ecosystem of it that, uh, you know, once you are able to figure out like, uh, you know, being in one room together, like, let's say we are both of us, then we can invite our friends and uh, then we can like make, a, a, you know, jam and like uh, maybe from the jam can come like a band and uh, then you can, uh, you know, make uh, essentially like a universal band that uh, we don't even have to meet in the real life but uh, that uh, you can actually you know mm -hmm. make music together and sure. uh, that was actually before the there was the word or at least i didn't know the the word metaverse at least mm -hmm. it was not like so popular so um, i was kind of thinking about this this concept for for a while and then uh when uh, there came the, the the word metaverse and it, it was everywhere you know like talking about it so I was kind of that was kind of like really the moment I, I uh, decided okay now now is the time to really like progress with the vision and mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that's uh, that's one year ago I would say yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so did you what was your first headset did you do you do you have <laughs> a, like a good story about getting into it or seeing it at a at an electronic store or a friend's house like I remember yeah. that <laughs> moment when we first uh, ours was the PlayStation VR. And bringing that home i you know showing my wife and she just totally <laughs> was like this seems so stupid and then ha try having her try it on and seeing it's one of those things i always tell people like you can't you have to just try it you know to to really understand what this is like how transformative to me it was just like night and day like it was like this is going to be everything is even that mm -hmm. at that state it was like comfortable and if you just kind of even with the the PSVR, if you just kind of let yourself go and go for it, I feel like it's so immersive already. And I mean, I have like a quest two now, but I know yeah. they have even higher resolution sets, like, you know, the index and mm -hmm. there's just more and more and more. And it's just the user um, usability of it is what I love. The changes that I'm seeing with like the, the meta, how Facebook changed their name to meta and the Oculus, uh, like just the user interface. I don't know if you had a chance to um to try the newer quest like the the, uh, the meta quest 2 or whatever but yeah, just moving around yeah exactly <laughs> i got mine in the other room um but yeah like what was that story like for you when getting in there yeah um i think i i tried it in a like electronic shop like it was in like public place it was the first time i tried vr and it was uh, actually just uh, in a video animation that was uh, like that sc scuba diving like of uh, like you know that you were diving deep in the ocean and mm -hmm. uh, i remember that uh, i was really mind blow because i mean the graphics was pretty decent as it was not a game and it was just like a video but like i mean it was a like animated video but mm -hmm. uh, it looked pretty pretty impressive and uh, i remember that uh, i was really mind blown by the by the first experience mm -hmm. and uh secondly i i tried it at my my friend's place that um i was like so that was the moment when i got really excited about this uh technology and that uh, music is gonna be the future mm -hmm. and i tried uh electronauts uh it was a like music game and uh 
I remember that uh, it was on HTC and uh, I was a little bit disappointed that uh, I was like thinking, oh, okay, the graphic is still like not really there. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a little bit like, uh, so uh, that moment I was like, okay, I will, I will postpone the idea for like a few months or, or, or and uh, I was uh, focusing more on uh, some, some other stuff. But uh, then uh, like when, uh, then uh, came like Oculus Rift and then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's uh, it's a, an interesting headset and I, I bought it I started to experience a little bit and uh, that kind of like brought me back to 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 start developing and and now definitely like the biggest push was the overall like um, you know metaverse kind of uh, appearance but everyone was talking about metaverse and I was like you know okay this makes perfect sense and uh, so now now it's time or or you know, now or never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it seems like the perfect time. And it's been such an interesting journey that um, VR has been going through where, you know, the initial surge of popularity when it first came out, and then it seemed to take a little bit of a, a dive down with, you know, people, um, you know, not quite, I think a lot of the issue with a lot of people was they tried those phone sets which uh, i mean i didn't i remember when they were out i didn't try them myself but i heard stories of it, a lot of people just did not being quite there and then people just kind of assuming that's what vr is and i think that may have held back the progress yeah. a bit but it feels like it's coming back for another surge especially now with you know facebook changing their name and all this talk of metaverse and nfts and crypto infusing all together it seems like it's all coming and you're you you guys are going to be right there you know at the forefront of it so um i mean it's i just think it's great it's it's going to be fun to watch um but uh, yeah i mean just before we go any further and keep talking um what do you want to just describe a little bit about what museverse is and kind of just set the table as far as for people watching this and not really knowing exactly you know maybe they haven't watched any of the videos on the deep funding or stuff like that so of course i will be very happy to to say more so uh, museverse is a like a, it's an ecosystem i would call it and uh, it's an ecosystem that uh, allows uh, musicians to to make music in a in a virtual reality and it allows to compose music it allows to perform music and uh, we are integrating the system in in the metaverse field so we are building as a like a platform is a layer on top of met already existing metaverses and uh, our goal is uh, is bringing this uh, immersive experience for musicians that they can uh, have the right tools to to make music so we are creating uh, like a first interactive uh, musical instruments as uh, nfts so you can own an instrument and you can uh, have it in uh, in a metaverse you, like uh, the, the vision is that uh, you once you have the instrument that you could uh, bring it to any metaverse so it would be like uh, trans transferable like to multiple metaverses and uh, we are also building in a tokenomics ecosystem that uh, would reward uh, musicians for uh, you know uh, performing in the in the metaverse club like uh, like we have, uh, we have uh, right now uh, one metaverse club in uh, Somnium Space Metaverse, and mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the the goal of, of the tokenomics is uh, and the utility of it is uh, supporting the artists that uh, have uh, that uh, they have a will to to perform and uh, make music in this uh, virtual reality field that uh, they could uh, not just make it for fun, but uh, they could uh, make a living out of being a musician. And uh, so the ultimate goal is really to to support and uh, make embrace musicians that they can be as individuals uh, and exist uh, and be financially independent. And, uh, you know, virtual reality really allows you to be anywhere on, in the world once you have the Internet. So um, it can kind of be in a way for freedom of uh, ability of create music that uh, like I, I definitely see that. Uh, you know, I, I know my music journey, and like uh, I also had had like was trying my music career. I was performing in the clubs, and uh, it's definitely like a difficult uh, journey for a lot of musicians. And I mean, it's it's getting very saturated the 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 market, and uh, it's not easy for you know play in clubs, and uh, especially in the for people that uh, you know coming from uh, 
let's say some third world countries or or just like you know they don't live in a in a city and they they don't want to live in a city and uh, so if you are somewhere in the village and uh like you are making some uh very like a uh, special musical genre and nobody understands in the the community around so uh this could be like a way how you can express to the to the right audience and uh get rewarded so that's that's the whole whole mission yeah it's so exciting too to see that kind of technology because we like to go like camping and you know do road trips and stuff like that and it's so exciting to see like starlink technology from from elon musk and they're hoping to get like to the point where they're getting like a gigabyte download speed um mm -hmm. where you can we'll be able to be in the middle of nowhere and still be on our headsets playing in the metaverse and i mean so that's becoming more and more uh you know ready by the day so yeah yet another technology coming together uh to make all this happen um where you're talking about this um it's really aligns a lot with what seems like what uh jam galaxy is mm -hmm. um doing and i i did hear you guys i don't know how much you can say now but i did uh hear on you know from edwin uh talking about how there may be some sort of connection there between you guys i don't know if you can talk about the collaboration but if you can i'd love to hear i'm sure people are excited about that project as well so sure sure like uh yeah i mean we are in dodge we are definitely like I think we have the same vision of what uh, what we want to achieve, and uh, the main goal is to to allow musicians to be, you know, to support them and uh, be independent. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at this phase, like we are figuring out, as there's a lot of topics that and a lot of uh, kind of fields we are like aiming with our projects. Yeah. So yeah. we are very much like defining what uh, could be how it could be the the cooperation, and sure. we'll see. Like uh, I'm I'm super excited. I'm I'm big fan of. Uh, what Diana is uh, is working on, and uh, I hope we will find some way how uh, we can uh, we can collaborate, and I think sure. time will see. And uh, but uh, it's a super exciting project. And yeah, definitely, definitely. It seems like all these spin-off projects are just coming out of nowhere. I know they've been working on a lot of it uh, in the background, but I mean, there was like Singularity DAO, and then now NewNet and Rejuve, and now jam galaxy and it's just like they're rolling it out and it's just like seems mm -hmm. like a ne it's never ending and you wonder how it's all coming so so much together all at once it's it's pretty amazing um so yeah i i, I heard you guys talking about um that you're going to be using the ai segmentation tool from singularity net um which mm -hmm. sounded really exciting i love that idea it actually mm -hmm. reminded me of a back watching a video about led zeppelin from years and years ago they would do concerts mm -hmm. and the uh promoters of the concert that were they were like working with to sell the tickets were basically ripping them off and they weren't they were pretending that there was less people there than there really was so back then they had this was like the beginnings of this sort of technology just by eyesight they had it they hired a helicopter pilot to go up above the stadium and they were able to take detailed pictures where they could prove that they were saying there was only about you know half as many people as really <laughs> were there so they should be a, the ticket sold but it reminded me of that but that's such an interesting thing and then combining that with um you know you have the tokenomics from cardano side and then you have the ai segmentation so you can you know see how many people are, people are at this concert and then you know based off of that you they'll get a certain token amount of tokens you know that you guys are going to come out with that's i know that's what the plan was but mm -hmm. um where did that can the impetus for that um come about um was it just through talking with ben or does how, what was that process like uh i mean the process is that uh you know first of all i'm, I'm a big fan of uh, singularity net for for a long time and uh, i always knew that i want to go as close as possible to you know to apply it and uh you know have the back end on uh based on singularity net and so uh, the I think the 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 analogy of like how I how figure out was that I was uh, experimenting with uh, the AIs that are already on the marketplace, and uh, I was kind of applying like how I could uh, use the the tools in the in in my vision. And uh, one of the aspect was that uh, like how to effectively reward the musicians for uh, for their performance. And uh, you know, as you have in a, in a real life. Uh, if you have a concert and you have a five people that's probably like not super 
successful concert or maybe sometimes it is but uh like if you have, or if you have like uh i don't know 500 people then then i would say it's a it's it's a it's considered to be successful concert and uh i would say it's the same uh, analogy as in the in the metaverse and uh so uh the the way how uh, we see it is that uh, they should be also rewarded by by uh, who, who comes to the concert and uh, how much entertainment uh, they make and uh it it naturally uh come along with the ai segmentation tool that uh you can actually you know have a snapshot camera that uh you know once the performing is uh, is, is happening that uh, can count how many people is uh, is is there and uh, uh in our design of the the smart contracts we would have a, a system that would create a reward pools and so uh the musician would uh, re receive the tokens right after the performance so um Essentially, like let's say you perform in the Metaverse Club, you have a five people. To simplify it, you would get uh, five tokens. If you have a you know 500 people, you would have 500 tokens right after the the, the performance. And uh, so the the vision and the, the what we are building is that uh, it would be automatic system. And uh, the AI segmentation tool is definitely the the right way how you can actually apply it also across the metaverses. So like um uh, because every metaverse is a little bit different uh, technical aspect and uh, once you can like snapshot and count the people it's going to very much simplify the 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 automatic way of rewarding the artists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's great and then um do you have, what's the vision for the token once the artist gets the token where does it go from there i guess okay so uh the vision of uh, how we want to build it is that uh, you would receive it uh, on your smart wallet. So we want to create a smart wallet on a, on a mobile phone or or you could have it on theoretically on PC. And uh, so uh, once you get the token, like uh, you have uh, multiple choices. You have, uh, you can uh, convert it to Bitcoin or USDT or, you know, trade it on, on some, some uh, and swap it for, for some different coin. And uh, then you can withdraw it, maybe buy something. Mm -hmm. Or you can, uh, we also want to provide uh, services, which would be uh, the musical instruments. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you want to invest in your career and maybe have a, you know, more interesting design of the instrument, uh, mm -hmm. then you can, you know, you can buy it with the token. And also uh, the, I would say more important thing is that uh, we would provide a sound banks that uh, would be minted as an individual sound would be as an NFTs. So um, you could uh, buy individual sound with, with with the token, and so it would uh, it would connect with your musical instrument, and uh, so it would be as an investment, uh, let's say, in your in your career, and that you can go a little bit more further with the sounds, and mm. so that's uh, that's the utility we, we consider. Okay, cool. And so uh, it's kind of thinking about how there's going to be NFTs that will be instruments. So are you going to have basically different varieties of, say, a piano? Like, will there be more than one piano so multiple people could have a piano? It's, it'll just be different kind of designs laid out over yes, that. Yes, 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 okay. Yes. Uh, we want to support the kind of uh, originality. I mean, as a NFT space kind of, uh, you know, show that the right way is that uh, each of the unique item is, uh, is original. And we want to very much follow that, that uh, you can uh, kind of connect with the with your musical instrument and that, uh, you know, that you like this specific design. And so you, you want to own it because of the design, but also, you know, on top of it, you can uh, like load it with the with the sound banks. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I think the originality is uh, something people want to associate with and um, it, it's more like personal, personal instrument and yeah that's huge nowadays with gaming and everything customizing characters and stuff like that is that'll be great mm -hmm. i love that um so yeah i'm just um i i recently watched the um cardano hotel um podcast that you did that was that was an interesting uh interview you guys did there i remember you talking about you know um certain ideas of where things were going like where are you guys at right now? What's what's kind of been happening over the last like couple months or weeks, like some milestones met or just where are you guys at? Okay. Uh, right now we have a music uh, club and uh, like 
music complex in Somnium Space. We we decided that uh, Somnium Space is the first metaverse that uh, is is actually like functional and uh, support virtual reality. And so uh, we are we are focusing now on a uh, build some uh, the the most you know robust prototype of, of the system on top of a uh, Somnium Space metaverse. And uh, so currently we are we are developing the there's a certain thing that calls uh, Somnium World, which mm -hmm. is uh, like kind of a bubble you can teleport in, and it's an entire world that you can uh, like experience. And so our our main focus right now is to, to build the the first system of uh, musical instruments uh, in there that you can uh, allow the interaction between uh, people. So that uh, let's say I, I would say probably in two three months if things go well i don't want to promise anything sure, sure. Uh, I, I think we could have some first uh, prototype over there so <laughs> technically you could uh, you know we could take this uh, vr headsets and like we could load in and uh, we could uh, as we have this you know talk we could be there and like uh, next time we could you know yeah. make some music there and, yeah let's uh, do that let's do that for sure i think we could probably i know they have some recording uh, abilities too so maybe we could even record something and we could throw it in exactly. with the yes, podcast yes. and is it is it i remember you saying uh that the space is can people visit it now even as it is mm -hmm. like you can just go right in yeah. and and yes, what yes, what yes. is that process like how how would someone do it um if okay. they were interested uh, so uh it's a you have to download the uh, some new space application so uh it's like uh right now supported for for pc mm -hmm. and um uh, you make a you make an account and uh, then uh, once you log in, like uh, you can find on our Twitter, there's a like parcel number. Like mm -hmm. um, I don't remember from head, but uh, we are very yeah. close to the to the main uh, Somnium Plaza, which is like the main. main yeah, I was uh, looking at it. I think, or I remember on the Cardona Hotel, you guys had a, a map of it, and you have like the four spaces there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 correct, correct. Cool. So. Uh, so uh, that's that's something. Uh, it's it's very close for the for the. So once you tel teleport there or like once you log in, then uh, you can uh, visit our complex. We have uh, our showroom there. We have a music club there, and uh, so you can see the musical instruments. So the, mm -hmm. the 3D models are already um, already there, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of like first uh, visible thing of uh, you know what what is coming and. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely, we also gonna be organizing uh, concerts. We already did uh, like uh, one. Um, it was a metaverse festival, which uh, mm -hmm. we did, uh, I believe, one month ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, we actually had a hybrid event that uh, it was. Uh, we had artists in a, in a, like one space. It was like four hundred people, and we wow. had uh, twenty five VR headsets, so people actually could could hear the music in the the real venue but they could also experience it in the metaverse they also were people like um just uh, in the metaverse that uh, they just come come there to check it out so uh we definitely gonna follow on that so uh that could be a good uh, experience to 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 or good 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 way how to experience our our uh, metaverse complex so um I think the, this live music performances uh, are are interesting because uh, you can um, see the other avatars, you can you know dance, you can interact with people. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a uh, it's it's really interesting uh, to to experience it, especially in VR. And uh, I would definitely recommend to anyone who who didn't have a chance to try it. It's a uh, it's a uh, definitely promise of what what is coming and. Um, and uh you know as as everybody is talking about metaverse and nobody or not that many people had a chance to experience it i, I would say the somnium space is definitely the furthest so far mm -hmm. with uh with um, what uh, mark zuckerberg and other people are are just in this phase talking about mm -hmm. no that's great yeah i mean i'm definitely i'm gonna get in there with you um so definitely want to uh figure out how to do that so the easiest way is to would you say to get that actual just basically google somnium space download the app and then just it's pretty yes. easy to to would you then say directions i mean because it's a it's a giant i think there's like ten thousand or five thousand parcels or something like that yeah, 5, how would they years. actually get into the space itself to once they download um the app is it pretty 
self-explanatory yeah it's it's relatively easy like um so you go to somniumspace.com there is mm -hmm. a down you know download uh, i think application or something like that mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you download you install you create an account and then uh you connect to to vr mm -hmm. you have to make sure that uh, you have a steam uh, vr first mm -hmm. uh, like up you know launched and mm -hmm. then uh, you are capable to to load in okay. and then uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward and uh you can actually there's a tablet in the vr so um if uh i can i can try to find the 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 number so you you actually type the number sure. of uh, what what parcel is uh, is there mm -hmm. and uh so we are at uh hold on to, to make uh so we are parcel 4703 and so okay. if you write this on a, on a tablet, you, you can actually access the our complex and uh, you're more than welcome to, to check it out. And uh, definitely in the upcoming months, uh, we, we're going to have more inter interaction. So uh, uh, check out our Twitter and uh, we will definitely follow up with, uh, with events, what we are, we are planning to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's probably the, the best way how to, how to do it. Great, great. And then is there, obviously you're thinking at least to some extent about the future and what that would be. Is there room for expansion there um, to be able to build out more and more? Or is it just, I mean, is it's basically, we'll, you'll just have to see as you go because more people are just coming in and buying more parcels and there's no real knowledge of, you know, saving spaces, I guess. It's just kind of an open market for, so would that expansion most likely you think be within Somnium space or... Do you have a, a vision for moving it out of that at some point as you expand? Or? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, definitely right now we want to focus to build some the, the solid uh, base in uh, Somnium because mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. like we, we, we know the team and it's uh, incredible people and uh, like we, we support them. But uh, mm -hmm. definitely, we, we don't want to stay in only one metaverse. So um, we already have some discussions like... Um, with uh, Victoria VR and like um, uh, we considered also sandbox, but I mean it's it's a little bit different kind of game as uh, you have uh, kind of like Lego looking. Uh, not we are supported, so uh, mm -hmm. we are kind of experimenting of uh, what uh, we could do. Mm -hmm. But definitely, like our goal is to to provide musicians the most immersive uh, experience. So mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, I would say we want to make first good product and. Uh, also, we want to expand to have a standalone version. So if you don't feel like uh, going, you know, to the metaverse and then like walk uh, to this to some some space, and so so uh, you could actually have a, an application that uh, you would just straightforward uh, open, and you would invite your friend, and uh, you would just connect in in one room. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that that's something like we we want to also provide to kind of make it smooth for for. Um, people that they can do it quickly that they, they don't have to like uh, spend some time to just you know move in the in the metaverse to, sure, to sure. the other complex yeah as you expand you'll make it easier and easier for people to just build it out yeah make it good make sure that yeah that makes sense to focus on that and then you can naturally build it out as things expand and more things open up i know you know facebook not that you i don't i meta i should say um not that you want to specifically i know meta i mean especially is very kind of um the discussion on that is i mean speaking of toxic i mean there's a lot of opinions out there about mm -hmm. you know what they're up to and you know whether where their intentions are and whether they want to try to own the metaverse but regardless of any of that they are um you know making horizons at the moment it seems like they have their own metaverse plan so you know i i hope my i think a lot of our hope is that there it'll be and which is also what meta has said that their intention is is to make it open and everything you have different you know basically modules like different cities or where you know you could have everything connected but you know valve has their metaverse and sony maybe has theirs but it's all you know and hopefully it becomes decentralized and you know more and more and but that's exciting so i mean we're getting towards the end i think basically we've covered a lot of these questions there's just a couple other things um i wanted to say thinking about going on in the future and where things would go like thinking about in a perfect world if everything goes the way like what's your vision maybe like 10 
or even 20 years, what, what, what's some of like your North stars of where you could see where you'd really love to see things be, you know, in a good amount of time where everything is running and, you know, you have, you've expanded like what, just a little vision of what that might look like, I guess. Okay. So, um, the whole vision is uh, to really have a solid ecosystem that uh, provides musicians like everything and like mm -hmm. that you, you can actually immersively come to the to the to the metaverse and like you can uh, if you want to make music you, you can be connected with the other people but it's, that's very much like what I said but like uh, before but uh, I mean what I see is that uh, the virtual reality is gonna have evolution and uh, you know right now we have this this heavy you know, like uh, not really, you know, smooth uh, VR headsets. And I think uh, the biggest improvement is going to come up with, with the hardware part of like bringing the hyper-realistic, uh, you know, um, kind of design of like, you know, that uh, you can you can have experience. So I think there needs to to definitely come this uh, this to, to have the full immersive experience. And uh, I think just like uh, with, with the progress of the technology, it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna open more capabilities also for for developers and for us. So we will be able to put more uh, more objects, more like you know with a really high definition texture, and uh, we want to to focus definitely to have some very nice designed uh, like environment that you can feel like uh, you know connected to, and uh, and uh, definitely like uh, the ultimate goal is also uh start making the musical genre center so uh like you know as we will start expanding to multiple metaverses and uh we want to start also expand in in each of the metaverses uh, in multiple locations and uh we want to you know provide uh, the different type of music experience in in each of the plays because i mean some people like let's say rock music some people like hip-hop music some people like uh, techno music and um it's also defined by the design and by the, by the style. So um, kind of the ultimate goal on the, let's say the 10, 20 years is really having like uh, music genre, like, uh, you know, kind of uh, places where, uh, you know, you can uh, kind of associate and you can start building a communities that, uh, that are like, you know, like this kind of style. And so, you know, there's going to be just rock music in, uh, in that, that, that style, that, that club and, uh, and uh, I think uh, also uh, pushing the forward the experience of, uh, you know, projecting the real musical instruments in the virtual reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, like, you know, once I have the piano and like, you know, synthesizer and like back there guitar, like I really want to have the immersive experience of using the, the tools I'm, I'm used to and like, you know, like play the real instrument and mm -hmm. uh, that would be projected in the in the virtual reality so mm -hmm. you're gonna have like a full kind of you know life uh, realistic experience of uh, you know st maybe standing in the in the stage and uh, you know performing maybe even like for hundreds of people mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and uh, it, it uh, you know that's that's kind of like what, what I really like on this vision is that uh, you might be at home and, uh, you know, maybe with your family and uh, you you kind of like, you know, don't want to go that much often to some uh, real life concert, but like, um, you know, you can actually like play from your home, like comfy home and just do yeah. VR headset. Yeah. You can have this like really adrenaline experience and, mm -hmm. uh, and then you just like, put out the the VR headset and you you are home and uh, like with your family and uh, then yeah. uh, you know that's uh that's kind of like the beauty of of this choice that uh, you don't have to be physically in that that, that place and you can be whatever so uh, that's a it's a, it's going to be a long journey but uh i hope we're going to make it uh, earlier than 10 years mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. like 10 20 years that's uh that's uh i think uh with all um, singularity net projects, maybe we will even see the artificial general intelligence in the time. So I know Ben's things. expecting it within that amount of yeah. time. So I mean, I'm if I'm gonna believe anybody about it, I'll believe him. So it's pretty crazy to think about him talking about that happening within the next like five to like ten years at the worst. And it's like, yeah. But I mean, you see the exponential growth of technology and stuff like that. And you believe, I mean, it's you it seems like almost un 
unbelievable to even try to pretend to think how quickly technology is going to expand and how these things happen because it's just been getting exponentially faster and faster and faster as we've gone the last hundred or so years couple hundred years it's just been uh especially like from the dawn of, to the dawn of the, the digital age and now with virtual spaces and everything um but yeah so like the model would be basically that you have your your actual instrument at home and then there's a model basically virtual model that's kind of wraps itself around the piano in the house as opposed to like having a, exactly. a full i mean I, I guess one day the idea when there's haptic feedback for everything and everything's perfect you could just project everything if we had mm -hmm. you know some sort of gloves we were wearing but you're mm -hmm. focused more on just having taking what we already have and then just building out a virtual image yes. of it that yes, yes, makes yes. sense I think uh, in the future, like we would like to have both options. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I think the the definitely the way is to be as varied as possible. So I mean, like if someone has a just haptic uh, suit and uh, he doesn't have the musical instrument, then he will want to use the haptic suit to to play imaginary piano. But like somebody might not have a haptic suit, but he has a piano. So mm -hmm. uh, I want to allow them that uh, it would project the piano, the keyboard, and like mm -hmm. immersively play the play the with hands on a, on an instrument that uh, you know he knows and mm. uh, so I would say it's a matter of, uh, of of choice and uh, we definitely want to be as wide as possible like with with protocols that uh, it would support and with uh, it, even if it's like you know MIDI or if it's like just audio and uh, also the the haptic experience I think that's uh, that's gonna be definitely a big thing in a uh, next next couple of years it's mm -hmm. already like there are already amazing products like tesla suit it's a mm -hmm. it's a pretty incredible technology so uh, we definitely want to parallelly go and both both direction and we want to provide as smooth as possible experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I, I was, I wanted to just give you the floor to see, is there anything, cause do you know what's going on more than any of us? And, you know, I'm here asking you the questions I have that come to me, but is there anything you'd like to say about where things are going or anything I didn't touch on that you think would might be important for people to know, or that you'd like people to know? Um, I would probably just embrace to people to start exper experiment in the metaverse field. Like uh, definitely, I think good good place to start is the Somnium space, which is like not that known one, but uh, it's it's a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely like, interesting one is also Neos that's uh, already providing like a pretty remarkable experience of. Uh, you know, building inside of the VR, like, uh, so you're not on, on the pro, like, you know, program in a, in a, like, let's say Unity or Unreal, you just like, you can actually build inside of the, the metaverse, which uh, was pretty mind blowing experience. Mm -hmm. So I would just uh, embrace people to, to give a chance to, to check it out, like a little bit experiment. And of course, I will be very happy if, uh, if you follow what we do. And um, definitely, if you have any questions, like, uh, let us know. We will mm -hmm. be happy to, to, to say uh, advice or, or um, guide what, uh, what, what you're searching. And um, I would say that's, that's probably what everything I had to, in my yeah. mind. And then NEOS, how do you spell that for people? Um... Uh, N-E-O-S. Okay. It's uh, it's also uh, actually based here in Czech Republic, like uh, also like the Somnium space, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's pretty interesting um, like metaverse. It's a, uh, I would say it's like uh, similar to v VR chat, and uh, it's it's just has a little bit uh, interesting experience. It's like uh, I have to say like. Uh, I had one story that I experienced that that uh, mind blown me it was that um, I was just coming there and like I met one person like uh, I've never met before and uh, the person kind of like almost lived there which was uh, pretty pretty interesting and the guy was from Germany and like mm -hmm. he 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 was able to speak fluently Japanese because uh, there was a big Japanese community and uh, that was first pretty impressive thing and the second mm -hmm. thing was uh, that um, I told him about the musical instruments that we do and. Uh, so he, he, he told me like, yeah, show me. And so I was like, okay. And so actually like through VR, you can actually access your, your folders in a computer. 
And so I was actually able to drag and drop the musical instrument I have. And he was like, oh, like he was watching it. And was like, oh, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And like he, he just make it big. And then he was like, okay, so maybe you can plug it like this, this, this. And in like uh, three minutes, he actually was starting playing the musical instruments in, in VR. And it was like, wow, this is wow. really mind blowing. And uh, then he said like, um, yeah, you know, this is cool stuff you were doing. Like, uh, Here, here's the avatar I, I am giving it for you and he just like you know passed me the avatar and the 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 file just appeared in my computer and I was like I was really mind blown by by this experience mm -hmm. like yeah so this is yeah. like what uh, is gonna come and, and uh, what's what's already is here that's so exciting so yeah we'll definitely have um when it's a good time for everybody we'll come back with you and maybe I can we can come in I'll come in and you know check out the space with you virtually uh, we can certainly stay in touch. And if you think there's stuff you want to talk about or, but yeah, I definitely want to do the VR experience, um, perhaps together. If you think that that's, uh, you know, something that is a good way to do it, or we'll certainly talk and let the community Absolutely. know as we go. Um, so the best places to reach or out to you or to, or to follow you, would you say, I know you said Twitter, is that the best yeah. space or some other channels you wanted to social channels you wanted to shout uh, out yeah twitter discord uh yeah i would say the, these two are are our main ones mm -hmm. so uh definitely like you can check out our websites also like uh we are active on email so if you have anything um, there yeah and uh but i mean the, the the socials definitely twitter i would say awesome yeah i know insomnium space has a discord i believe as well that you can yes, join yes, up yes, with yes, and yes. Absolutely. Uh, I, I definitely embrace people to to check out uh, some new. It's, it's incredible. Awesome. It's well, thank you so much for giving us so much time. And uh, it's, yeah, I feel like it was so natural to me because it's like VR is super, you know, interesting to me. I love it. And music is like one of my favorite things in the world. So it was this, this uh, coming up with questions and thinking about it was easy for you. So yeah, thank you though for giving us the opportunity to learn more. I think people are going to be really excited about this. So, cool. No, thank you. It was a pleasure to to have a interview with you, and um, I'm excited uh, to maybe do the next one in VR and like mm. we can uh, we can yeah certainly a, certainly work. certainly could, be, could right. be a good experience. I would say. All right. Well, thanks again, and uh, we will talk to you soon, and we'll keep people updated as we go with everything. Perfect. Thank you, Julian. Thank you.